Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great as always. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content. And we got another great team to feature today, courtesy of a very good friend of mine, Will. R is his handle online. All his socials will be linked down below. Drop him a follow. He's a great player and a great guy. But he has provided the Zashian team for us today. And the interesting thing about this is obviously we've got the Latias in there. And this has has seen a little bit of usage in series 10 and done pretty well uh, got the rocky helmet on there and it provides a lot of support for the team with icy wind and obviously tailwind and that pesky ally switch that i'm sure will be coming in handy in today's episode you've also got the choice scarf on the urshifu which is a nice option i do like that it gives you uh, a little bit more freedom with with playing urshifu you've got to play with it a little bit more carefully of course but with the choice scarf there it gives a little bit of a kind of surprise factor in battles you've got a support and cast of instant and Rillaboom and why not because they're on every good team in this format and then the lander is incarnate which is one of my favorite inclusions in series 10 and really seeing the rise of that with its sheer force hidden ability and then rounding off with the Zashin, which is just down here with the uh, standard kind of set with iron head sacred sword now i tend to normally go with substitute on my Zashin builds and things like that so it's nice to be able to play the sword stand set that gives a little more um punishment for switching around from your opponent's end of the field especially when they're trying to adjust to get intimidate onto the field it gives you that really good opportunity to get the sword stance up and put yourself at a really good advantage going into that next turn so here is the rental card uh, a big shout out to will once again hopefully you enjoyed today's episode we'll have a couple of games with the team as we normally do and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end so without further ado friends let's jump into our first game of today's episode okay first up today we got mogar who is malcolm a very solid australian player and very excited to play them in today's episode obviously got the raichu there gotta have that one in there uh, so the Raichu the Landorus Incarnate Incineroar Amoongus Tapu Fini and Xerneas so Xerneas a big threat for any team coming up against you know uh, you've got to worry about that Geomancy getting procced and we've got to really be mindful about trying to shut it down and stop it so just kind of taking a quick look at Will's team let's have a look at what options he's got uh, parting shot snarl so the snarl's not too bad there um, and obviously having Zashian on the field is going to make things a lot easier for us we've got to watch out for the Raichu with fake out um obviously it's going to be faster than our fake out uh options um and then the intimidate from the incineral and amoongus as well going to be a little bit of an a little bit obnoxious to deal with so i think what we'll do is i feel like urshifu could be quite good here but i don't know if i've got room to kind of bring it um i think We'll go Incineroar as a lead. It's quite nice. It kind of gives us a little bit of uh, room against the Amoongus. Uh, we could go Tailwind as well, but then, you know, uh, Latias isn't the best in these situations. Maybe Landorus isn't too bad either. But again, Zashin, not too bad. We could bring Rillaboom, and then I think we'll wrap up with the Landorus in this one. Before we run out of time... Um, but yes, it's going to be a good game, good opponent to kick off with today. So it should be a lot of fun. And it's always nice to feature players that are well known in the community. And um, yeah, you know, uh, Mogar's done extremely well in a lot of tournaments recently and doing really well in uh, in general in um, the Pokemon scene. So we are kicking off with Incineroar and uh, Xerneas. But we do get our Zashin on the field. We'll uh, obviously get that Intrepid Sword boost, but it is going to be mitigated by the Opposant Intimidate. Now, I don't know whether or not I want to kind of trade fake outs here. It's probably a good idea to trade fake outs, really, you know. Um, we could potentially get um, Zashin off the field, or we could just go for a Sword Stance here. The issue is we've got to be a bit careful around the Opposant Incineroar, just firing off something like a flare blitz here now they could just go for the fake out like i say and just trade fake outs which is a pretty safe turn for us but we could also take advantage here and try and get a sword stance up i don't really worry too much about the incineros flare blitz they are um they are intimidated um so you know it is going to be mitigated to a certain extent uh we are going to see the amoongus come onto the field we'll get a fake out there we're we just going to yeah the rocky helmet coming in quite handy we get the sword stance in we're probably going to see a flare blitz here but you know on plus one we're in a nice spot a uh, plus one uh, parting shot yeah okay so it puts us down to neutral um and i'd imagine maybe the zone used to come back onto the field but this is all right now 
We've not taken too much damage in the process, but we do have Snarl that we can kind of rely on the next turn. So it's just Ashen out to Rillaboom, because uh, we've got to get around these Rage Powders. And we kind of want to have at least... <sighs> yeah, we don't want to get put to sleep. That's a thing, you know. Yeah, uh, so we Snarl. Mitigate the spore here. I mean, can they afford to spore? Or do they just protect? Because they one thing that it could potentially do is protect um, Xerneas here. And just go for a spore into Zashian. Uh, knowing that we've not got the substitute as well makes it a little easier for that player to kind of come to fruition. Um, but we'll try and get a Snarl off now. Incineroar not going to be really affected by any other spory stuff and rage powder stuff that's going on we'll be able to put the Xerneas down to at least plus one and you know kind of mitigate against potentially them getting an attack off the next turn with the pressure from the fake out so you've got to imagine that they're probably going to go on to protect this next turn that's what I would imagine just with the fake out pressure that we've got. The Snarl will be nice. Uh, it gives us a little bit of support here, of course. Um, but you've got to imagine that Moongus probably switches out to Incineroar this next turn. Uh, and I'm kind of I'm kind of tempted just to U-turn out onto the Moongus with, with Rillaboom and just go for another Snarl here. Because, like I say, I do expect the opposing Incineroar to kind of make its way onto the field for the... Among us. Now, I could parting shot as well, but I think we're probably better off keeping Incineroar on the field at the minute. Do I just U turn? Oh, we haven't got it. We've got knockoff wood hammer. So we're going to switch out last, you see. That's the issue. The U turn here would have been nice. I mean, we could just go for the fake out. Um, and then the next turn. It's not really doing us any favors, though. Uh, let's go for the fake out, just in case. I, I guarantee he's going to protect, though, and Incineroar coming in here. This is where the U-turn would be quite useful, but knockoff is also very useful. If you don't see the protect, then it puts us in a really good spot, but I can't imagine it not protecting. You've got to protect the, uh, the Xerneas here. here. <coughs> and now you get a free Dazzling Gleam off against our Insu. Wincy Wincy because they fake us out you see um, one thing we could potentially do is preserve Incineroar because Incineroar is going to be quite important for us I think in this match where we could try and get a wood hammer off into the Xerneas now we may be able to take that on plus one we should be able to unless they go for like a moon blast but we could switch in Zash in here uh, Zash is going to be able to take these attacks a bit better and we also kind of reset the drops on Incineroar at the same time preserve that in intimidate uh, to bring in again and have that fake out active um, just feel like Rillaboom is a little bit more kind of give up here rather than anything else and we'll get a good return even though we are intimidated the wood hammer should still do a nice chunk of damage uh, there's a fake out into our Zashian doesn't gleam moonblast where are we going that's into Zashian so we should take this yeah we take that pretty well get a free wood hammer off so like I say a special attack drops but we're in a good spot now where you know we've got oh that's a crit that's huge for us so that's really unfortunate for Morgar but you know yeah, there's nothing else to say. That's that's just really unfortunate because now we're in, uh, uh, you know, just taking away the big threat. That's really, really unfortunate. I cannot say anything other than that. It's uh, it's probably come at the worst point of the game. But we were doing everything we could up to that point where we were trying to mitigate the Xerneas. Um, and, and Zashin was in a decent spot the next turn to kind of come in. Where now, <sighs> it's a little awkward, isn't it? I mean, we can protect Zashin. And then probably switch into Incineroar but the game's kind of over now I mean I mean Morgan might might carry on to try and salvage this it's still got tools where they're, they're going to be able to do stuff but it's become ever so difficult from this point on and that crit is just a little bit unfortunate and I know exactly how they would feel if I was on their their end so Pokemon is a silly game at times. Uh, there's the Flare Blitz and uh, there's the Spore. Right, to Incineroar. 
expecting that switch in, so. Um, and we can double into the Amoongus, but the problem is with the Amoongus is it has got, uh, they, they're gonna be able to spore us. But a Behemoth Blade and a Flare Blitz should be enough to get it, you know. Just whether or not we want to maybe switch into something like Lando here or Rillaboom here, maybe. Because uh, Rillaboom at this point not really, really that useful. Um, and we can just Flare Blitz into the Amoongus and just get some damage onto it and preserve Sashian for later. But there we go, the battle's cancelled. So, yeah, like I say, we get very lucky. It's a bit unfortunate because you kind of want these games, when you play someone you know, you want them to play out like just on an even keel. And that is, yeah, it's not ideal, but um, very good game to Morgoth. Pleasure to play them as always. And uh, with that, friends, we will um, we'll move on to game two of today's episode. Okay, we've got our next opponent, and they are playing a team of Blacephalon, Reggie Alecki, Reggie Drago, Groudon, Rillaboom, and Incineroar. Great looking team. Got both the new Reggie forms in here, and Alecki and Drago. Uh, the restricted going to be Groudon. Uh, speed control, a bit interesting. There isn't really too many options of speed control outside of something like Electra Web on the Reggie Alecki. Um, so if we can utilize our speed control, it makes things a lot easier for us. It's a lot easier said than done though, um, just because uh, the Blacephalon is likely to be um, scarfed. Uh, but is Urshifu gonna be able to outspeed it? What nature are we? We've got to check very quickly. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. Ish, so, okay. That doesn't tell me anything, it doesn't help. Uh, we bring Zash in, and we will bring, and we will bring, and we will bring Landorus, I think, to this one. Rillaboom could have been quite good for the Groudon in particular, but we'll lock in with Landorus. And we'll see where it goes from here. Just messaging Mogar just to say, Sorry for the crit, even though it was nice to bump into them on the on the ladder, of course. But uh, yeah, it's uh, not not ideal. Anyway, let's see what we have. Right, the oh, ah, fake out is annoying. So, mm, I mean, have they got the ability to really stop Urshi? Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll tailwind and we'll surge and strikes. So we may lose Latius here. Depends where they fake out. I would imagine they'll fake out into the Urshifu. Yeah, and are they just gonna Shadow Ball? Or are they gonna go for the, yeah, Shadow Ball. Can we take this? I, I, ooh, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Oh, we can. Latias is a beast. Should have way more faith in Latias. Um, okay, now we're in a good spot. Getting that Tailwind up really does help us a lot. Now, the Blacephalon in an awful position. Um, we could ally switch. We could get Landorus in on the field. I think Landorus is pretty nice. That I do feel like I do feel like the Blacephalon's going to switch out here, but um, I lock into Search and Strikes because it makes more sense for what we're facing. You know, you've got the Incineroar, you've got the Groudon in the back, you've got the Blacephalon. Search and Strikes all day is the is a good option for us to lock in on anyway. So. See, Blacephalon going out. What's coming in? Rillaboom. Boom, boom. That's all right. Not too bad. We'll probably see a parting shot from the Incineroar. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the better target would have always been the Incineroar, I think. But you can't really ignore the Blacephalon. This just makes me think, like, is Rillaboom a good... Rocky Helmet user, potentially. The stuff like Urshifu it is, but um, otherwise probably not. Get the parting shot out onto the Landorus, which isn't ideal. Um, but it depends what comes in. If it's a Groudon, not too bad. Got to watch out for Fake Out the next turn, of course, from the Rillaboom. And being like minus one special attack is not great. And uh, you kind of want Landorus firing on as many cylinders as possible as we see the Groudon make its way onto the field. Okay. So Latias can come in. Um, and of course, the, the, the Rillaboom causes us a few issues. So one thing we could potentially do is just protect Landorus here, readjust our board position, switch 
push through out to Latias, especially if we expect like, oh, I don't know, are we going to expect Precipice Blades? Got to expect either Fake Out or Grassy Glide into into the, the Urshifu slot, I think. But we'll protect this turn. Let's see what this Groudon does. Just Grassy Glide, it's into the Landorus and we're going to see Stone Edge into the Landorus doubling up into that slot, which is interesting. Okay, so, um, we can sludge bomb, but you've got to think, are they going to switch the, uh, the Rillaboom out, potentially? Uh, they've got good switch-ins, but a sludge bomb should get, should get it, uh, and we could go Icy Wind as well, so it kind of, it mitigates a potential Blissephalon switching in now with the Tailwind coming to an end very soon. And then if Latias goes down, that's fine. Uh, Will will be all right, because it gives us a free switch into Zashin. But we should get Rillaboom here. Let's see what they, uh, what they do. Icy Wind. Yeah, we get it. Icy Wind and Sludge Bomb should be enough to get the boom. Ooh, it's not as much. Maybe a Psy Shock there would have been a better option, to be honest. Let's see, but with the life orb, I'm still we're minus one, but I'm still confident we get this. No, we do not. A wood hammer, a U turn, but it's not into the Latias, which is interesting. It's in two. Alanarus, okay. We still got fake out to contend with this next turn, but it does give us a little bit of room to kind of maybe adjust our board position. Oh, it is a little bit obnoxious as our Tailwind does pit her out. Um, I think we sack Latias here. We could try. I mean, we can we can ally switch. It's not really going to get us anything. It, this is why I want I want Latias to go down here. Um, if we can get an icy wind off, it's huge for us. But I don't think we'll be able to. Uh, but we want to try and get Urshifu back onto the field so we can we can deal with that Blissephalon a little bit easier. And then having like Urshifu and Landorus on the field makes things a bit a bit easier to manage things. Just whether or not our opponent will then switch out the Blissephalon the next turn or not. But I wonder if we'll see a Mind Blown here or just a Flamethrower potentially. Heatwave? Heatwave. And this will take down Latias. And a parting shot, I'd imagine. From the Incineral. I do see the Beast boost. Getting that special attack boost. And then there's that parting shot. Okay. Right, well. Here we go. Here we go. And we can't switch Landorus out just yet. I mean, we could, but then... Pff, just going to get a parting shot onto Zashin, which is never really... Great. Um, I think we'll Earth Power. Do we Earth Power? Just if the, the Rillaboom comes in there. It's like we could just sludge bomb that slot just to kind of cover bases. And then Surging Strikes as well. Because the Surging Strike should, in the sun, it should still get Blissephalon. Yeah. Hopefully it does. Come on, let's see. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it. And the Sludge Bomb, not the most effective attack into the Incineroar, but like I say, it covers the Rillaboom coming in, which is the biggest problem for us at the minute. Um, sludge Bomb into Incineroar. Like a Poison here would be amazing. If we could get the Poison, that would help us out a bunch. And there's that Parting Shot, which is all to be expected. Putting us down to minus two, not putting us in the best of spots. But you can imagine that Rillaboom is probably going to come in for that Incineroar. Uh, and Groudon potentially next to it, I think. <laughs> Our options are getting a little bit slimmer though now because it's hard to switch in. And uh, the sun fades. So the Groudon coming in now would make a lot of sense. Yeah, it's hard to switch in Zash in in, in front of a Groudon, you know. Um, but the Grassy Terrain must only have... Yeah, it's disappeared. So that's ideal for us. So they cannot go for those Grassy Glides anymore. Now they do have... Thick out. But 
Precipice Blades feels like the best option, I think. Yeah, it's going to be the Groudon coming in. And we could just close combat and sludge bomb into the Rillaboom because that will get it regardless. And they can only fake out one target. So uh, we don't want to sludge bomb into the Groudon. So sludge bomb and then close combat. And if. Oh, we're Trush Craft. Of course we are. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a good option. But it's not such a good option. We could probably. What they got? If we can get rid of the Rillaboom here, we can probably close this out. Between. Yeah, I think I think we can close this out with um, with Urshifu and Landorus, to be honest. See what they go for, though. Doesn't make much sense that they go... Well, Precipice Blades always makes sense, doesn't it? We get the Sludge Bomb, it should be enough, like I say. Ooh, very close, very close, very close. Um, and what is it going to be? Stone Edge. That's fine. But they, they miss, unfortunately. My opponent's not having the best of luck today. So, Stone Edge, we do avoid that. We got Urshifu in the back as well to come in. Uh, so, we could switch Urshifu in for Landorus now. Um, and maybe protect. Maybe we'll protect Zash in. Because obviously they'll get the fake out, which is, which is a little bit annoying. Oh, we... Yeah, I mean... It's probably better if we reset the drops on Landorus at the moment. Um, and just protect Zashin this turn. And then we can pull a switch from Zashin into Landorus Incarnate the next turn. To get away from any sort of uh, Flare Blitz or Precipice Blades damage. Which could be a little bit problematic. Um, and then it means we can get Zashin in again once the uh the and we don't need to worry about intimidate after that so battle was cancelled though so very good game to my opponent a pretty bit tough one a bit of a you know we got a bit lucky with a stone edge miss there but uh, i think all in all we would have been able to kind of close that one out regardless of that that hitting or not anyway good game to my opponent and it looks like we got time for one more game today so we'll jump into game three of today's episode friends next up we have another xerneas team to end up on today but they're running xerneas incineroar feromosa indeedy dragapult and metagross some pokemon that we generally don't see too much of in series 10 especially that metagross there and the feromosa but a very nice looking team none the same it's pretty scary though uh, you've got the xerneas is the main threat obviously you've got protection there from the indeedy with the terrain prevents fake out priority attacks and has redirection which can yeah make things a little bit more tricky for us for sure uh the intimidate there from the incineral going to be something we need to watch out for um well 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 can we stop it's like how do we stop i think what we'll do is we'll lead incineral because the snarl is always going to be useful um, parting shot as well. We want Rillaboom in the back, I think. Um, you know, leading Zashian isn't too bad because we can Sword Stance turn one. I think we want Rillaboom as well. And then to round things off, do we want Urshifu potentially? Because the Scarf could be good, but it kind of leaves us a little bit limited. Um, so this is not really too many other great options you know uh like landorus could be all right i think i'm gonna lean more towards urshifu in this one so we'll see how it pans out with this <clears throat> xerneas still so scary you know in a format full of zashin you know it just goes to show that you know how good xerneas really is still when it's it's still popping up and being used all the time and players are now getting used to being able to kind of uh, manage their board positions a lot better and and um you know support it and get it set up and whatnot so we do see incineral and we do see xerneas come up for my opponent i think here we could we could just take the time to just potentially go sword stance and snarl uh or we trade fake outs that's the that's the other thing the problem with trading fake outs is if they switch incineral out to indeedy here that's not really so great for us whereas if we take the opportunity to sword dance if they pull that indeedy switch in for the incineral which they may be likely to do now they're just trading fake outs okay, so it doesn't put us in the best of positions we could have just traded fake outs but again 
As long as the Snarl hits, we're not in the worst of spots. Because the Behemoth Blade... Yeah, it's not, not ideal, but not the worst. Another Snarl. Because we can protect Ash in the next turn, just Snarl. And it kind of stops the parting shot as well from the Incineroar. Um, we just mitigate those Geomancy boosts because that's a big thing that we're worried about, you know, the, the power that, that Xerneas has got. As long as we can kind of mitigate that, it makes it a little bit more manageable. Is that Leftovers? No, a check button on the Incineroar. Okay. <laughs> it's like, is that Leftovers Incineroar? Madness. But no. The eject button makes a lot of sense. Oh, we'll see what they bring in. Is it going to be in DD? In doo doo. In DD. Indeed it is. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> it had to be done. Okay, well, Indeedy coming in, that's all right. Uh, you got to worry about helping hand, though, as an option for my opponent because that is a potential thorn in our side, but we should be able to get another Snarl off, and I think what we'll do is just take a little bit of time here and just protect while we've got the opportunity to, because I think their biggest concern is going to be Zashin. It's got to be Zashin. You've got Intimidate in the back, though, to kind of mitigate that somewhat, you know, uh, but we just see a Follow Me come out. Whether or not we'll see a Dazzling Gleam, yeah, just to get some damage on the board, but Incineroar should be able to take this pretty well. Um, yeah, and we'll be able to snarl again after this, which is which is exactly what we want to be doing. We're just putting that pressure on my opponent. Now, the, the Xerneas is not really going to be able to hit us as hard, where we can go for a sword stance this turn, put ourselves into a, a really good spot, um, and just go for that sword stance and snarl again. And it's it's amazing to think how useful something like just snarl and Cineroar is, you know, being able to shut down something like Xerneas. Uh, we do see another Dazzling Gleam. Um, like I say, we take that so well. Um, and we get that Sword Stance up and uh, put ourselves to plus one. So if that Incineroar comes in, it just puts us down to neutral. So it kind of makes it a little bit more tricky for my opponent to utilize something like Incineroar in these situations. And they just haven't got the firepower now to um, to deal with his Ashen. Like you would kind of want it plus two. So... Uh, do we go for the sword stance again? Again, greedy. I feel like going for another sword stance really makes it difficult for my opponent to do very much. And then we can put the the um, the Xerneas down to minus two. All right, going for the moon blast here into the Incinera. Oh, into Zashin. But yeah, I mean, we take that so well. We don't really mind. We get that sword stance up and get another snarl off. And now we're, we're cooking on gas, as they would say. Up in the northeast of England, cooking on gas. Um, yeah, we were set up pretty well. Now we can go for a parting shot, get Incineroar off the field. So we've got that Intimidate, we've got that Fake Out in the back to bring in and alleviate some pressure later on. And we can just start kind of cutting through stuff. So I think we'll go for the parting shot into the Xerneas. And I mean. <laughs> I'm just going to Sacred Sword the Ndidi because I feel like at some point they're going to try and switch Incineroar in. Ah, they're not going to. They're not going to even bother. It just gets rid of the Ndidi though. So, uh, Dazzling Gleam coming out. Incineroar will take this. Um, and we'll get the parting shot into the Xerneas, which is a nice thing. So, we'll be able to get rid of the, the DD here. Get the parting shot into the Xerneas. And it's uh, just rendered useless at this point. And it means we can get something like Urshifu onto the field if we want to. Um, or Boom Boom. Have we brought Rillaboom to this one? Did we bring the boom? I think we brought Rillaboom. Yeah, of course we did. And then we got the faster fake out for when that Incineroar comes in. So we just fake out Incineroar and just cut. Cut the head off the deer, as we would say. So. Let's see, is the Incineroar going to pop on to the field? Yeah, but the Xerneas is just lost at the minute. And Rillaboom is just the best to come in now and just help us recover a little bit of damage off that we've taken along the way. Ooh, it's Feromosa. Huh. Okay. Do we care about the... Um, I don't really care about the, the Xerneas anymore, to be honest. I kind of just want to get rid of um, the Feromosa. That worries me. That worries me. And I can't imagine Feromosa having Protect. 
and I don't think they do. So their battle just cancelled there. You can see how well something like Incineroar does in those situations. You're just being able to like mitigate the threats there from Azernius. And with the safety goggles on Incineroar, you know, you don't have that worry about, you know, we didn't face it there, but things like Amoongus and Redirection uh, from Rage Powder. Obviously, the redirection is mitigated anyway by something like Snarl that can just get around that. So, very good game to my opponent. Nice way for us to wrap up. We've had a few good games with the team today. It's done super well. So, we'll jump over now and remind you all of today's rental code. Tier is today's rental code. Again, a huge shout out to Will and uh, thank you so much, my friend, for providing us with this team and letting us showcase it on the channel and provide it for everyone else out there. So, if you do try it out, definitely let me know, as always, down in the comment section what your thoughts are on this team on the build in particular and with anything that you would change or are you just having a good time with it if you are trying it out latias is a great pokemon in general providing that that speed control support and then everything else fits in perfectly and i do i have got to say i do really like the choice scarf on urshifu it gives it that it just gives it a little it takes it to the next step i feel and um, makes it a way more threat when you haven't got that speed control in effect you can still kind of rely on that urshifu to come in and, and uh clean up um some situations where you may otherwise not been able to just because of that speed tearing uh without the scarf so if you do try it out let me know um but we'll wrap things up there friends have a great rest of your day thank you so much as always for tuning in thanks for all the support on the channel and i'll see you all very soon for another episode um with series 10 so we've got more teams lined up so we'll be back very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye